Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hi, I'm Pastor Marty Ringer, and welcome to another great Sunday service here at St. Mark Lutheran Church. Now, you know, the Ohio Players had a song many, many years ago that said, Heaven must be like this. Now, they were trying to compare heaven to an earthly thing, but today we're trying to explain what heaven is really like. So I pray that this service and sermon is a blessing to you. In today's gospel, Jesus tells us five short stories called parables that describe what the kingdom of God is like. Now he tells us these stories to encourage us to trust that God's kingdom is worth waiting for through the good times and especially through the hard times. Remember, good things do come to those who wait. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord God, we, we thank you for another day, Lord God. Lord God, another opportunity to learn more about you, Lord God, and learn about this thing called life, Lord God. Lord God, when your son was here, he was explaining to the people what heaven is like. And we still are trying to teach the people, Lord God, and get an understanding of what heaven really is like. So, Lord God, I ask you at this moment, Lord God, open up our hearts, our minds, and our understanding, Lord God, to understand your heaven. Lord God, remove me from this space. Allow the Holy Spirit to enter to speak to your flock. Lord God, I thank you in advance for all of your grace and blessings. In your holy name, amen. So as, <clears throat> excuse me, as usual, I like to say happy Sunday or happy day, whatever day that you might be watching or listening to this. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. You know, today is a very interesting scripture and I'm going a, I'm to a just, just start off and let you know Everybody ain't going to get this one. Everybody is not going to get it. Some, some of you is going to go over your head. Some of them is just not going to connect. But now maybe later on you, you, you take a pause and rewind this. It might come through. And I'm, no, I'm not taking anything offensive behind it because Jesus was going through the same thing. He said, those with ears, let them hear. This passage is actually discussing and describing what the kingdom of God is like. What is heaven like? And really, question, is there differences? The kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God? You know, the, 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 the heavenly place, the paradise the place that we going to see Big Mama at at the end of the, our time, where everybody says that we're going to be united with each other in this heavenly realm, which we will. I think this is that place that Jesus was telling the, the thief that was on the cross with them that when I enter into my paradise, you will be there too. And Jesus responds, Often, too, he is going to going off to prepare a place for us. Then there's another aspect of this heaven here on earth. There is the heaven that we will reunite with everybody, unite. And I and I will let me put in this little clause too, okay? You know, I asked a, a pastor some years ago, I said, uh, you know, when I get to heaven, will I have the same intellect that I have now? You know, and in and, and, and layman terms, as dumb as I am down here on earth, will I be that dumb in heaven? You know, and he, he, he kind of just said, you know, in a sense, yeah, in a sense, because you're going to have your own kind of memory, your own kind of thought process. So, you know, I start, I start thinking about that because I'm like, you know what, I don't want to, me, myself, I don't want to be in heaven dumb. You know, just, just going up to Thomas like, oh, you denied Jesus three times, didn't you? 
And they're like, oh, oh, you got the wrong, wrong, wrong person. You know, I was Peter. You know, I, I can see going up to Mary like, so wait a minute, you was a prostitute before you had Jesus? How that work? You know, and I can see them saying like, wait, 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 brother, you got the wrong Mary. You need to do some more Bible study when you was down. It was two different Marys. You need to get your facts straight. So I'm saying, just, just throwing out there, you might want to do some Bible study and, you know, get to know. So when you do get up to the pearly gates, you kind of know a little something, something, something. Just, that's just a sidebar, okay? But now, today we're talking about what heaven is like here. What heaven is like here, and I'm going to throw this out there, okay, because I, I want you to, I want to try to build a little something here, some building blocks, some foundational stuff, because when it comes back, I want you to really understand what I'm saying. Those that have ears, let them hear. Before I read the scripture, there's a passage that we always say every Sunday, especially here in the Lutheran church. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Say it again. Your, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I want you to think about that. Hold on to that as, as if somebody is talking to you. I know we're always asking God and praying to God and saying that, and, 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 and the prayer that our Savior taught us to pray. But I want you to hold that for a second as if that was to you. Now, the scripture lesson that we're reading today is from Matthew, the 13th chapter, starting at the 31st verse and to the 33rd. And then we're going to skip from the 44th down to the 52nd. It's a parable that we know Jesus loves to teach from. And it sets another story. And this one is, is really, he's talking to the disciples. So he has the disciples, and the scripture begins like this. Jesus put before the crowd another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it's grown to its greatest, of shrubs, but is grown, but is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was levied. The kingdom of heaven is like Treasure hidden in a field which someone found and hid. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of, of a fine pearl or fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and brought it. And bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down and put, put the good into the basket and threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all of this? They answered, yes. And he said to them, therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. This is the gospel of our Lord, and we say praise to you, O Christ. You know, reading this, it kind of, Jesus does this in, in, in certain steps, and I want to kind of reiterate and go back and just make sure I, I correct something. One passage of this, he is talking to the crowds, 
And then we skip to another part that he's actually just talking to the disciples themselves. But it's interesting when Jesus first starts explaining to them. And I think when he first starts explaining the concept of what heaven is like. And we're going to break these down a little bit because he starts kind of telling them it's something that you can find. You find something, you grasp something that is worth more than anything that you have already possessed. It's more valuable than anything that you already have. So that means if I actually obtain this new, then I could probably obtain everything that I've already just lost. If I can understand what, what, what is awful, what I can find, then if I get this, I can actually replace everything that I've lost. This is more valuable than everything that I've lost. Why? Because I can get everything back with this that I found. He introduces heaven like this. It's something that a pearl that you have looked all over for and you found one of value, you are willing to let everything go. It's interesting how Jesus says if you lose your life, you can find your life. If you find this heavenly thing, you are, in a sense, I'm willing to lose all of my life or who I used to be because I can get everything that I could ever hope and want and wish for. Those with ears, let them hear. Then he also goes into how small a piece of it that you can have that will grow to be the biggest shrub or tree in the forest. It's like just having flour, but you mix and it multiplies. It's like having that small mustard seed of hope or that small amber of fire that can alight, that can just, just turn a whole forest, make a forest fire. We ain't going to talk about that. But that, that little slither of hope, that little mustard seed that can grow so large, this is what heaven is like. That small glimpse of hope of that job, that business, that organization, that dream, that small thing that you have that can manifest and grow larger than life. McDonald's started with one restaurant and is all over the world. You know, we look at these uh, mega churches where they started off as small, significant churches, small seeds that grew. A lot of us want the big apple tree and get upset when God gives us that apple seed because it grows. Your dream, your vision, he gives you that, and it grows. He even goes into saying it's like a net that's being thrown out, it catches the fish and brings them back in, and those that are not worth eating, you throw them back out. Those that are good, you put it in the basket. Sometimes those are like your thoughts. He gives you these thoughts that goes out that throws good thoughts out and some of those negative ones you got to take and take out and throw out. Take out, throw out. Let me, let me, let me, let me bring some things back to you to make you say, hmm. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. How many of those thoughts that you have. Think about this. If, if your thought was like, if your brain and your mind and everything was just like a fish's net and you every day throw those stuff out and you bring back in just the bad fish or you only keep the bad fish. I'm saying you think about those negative things of, of, of my health. I know I'm going to get sicker and I ain't going to make it to the end of the week. Oh, I, I know my job ain't going to keep me six more months. I, 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 I know my, my children, I know they're going to act up again and I'm going to pull it up and I'm going to hold these things in my net. 
And then I'm surprised when some of these things start manifesting. Because your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in your heaven. Have you noticed people that have negative views of life always find negative things that happen in their life? Isn't it interesting how they draw upon that? Jesus said, if you draw upon me, all good things come to me and come to you. What, is, what are you planting in your heaven? What are you catching in your fisher's net? And what, you, what are you keeping in that net? Are you keeping the bad fish? The bad thoughts? The negativeness? Or are you actually bringing in the good news of Christ and keeping that? And holding on to that and putting that in your basket. And standing on his promises. Those with ears, let them hear. Revelations, it says that Jesus, that God dwells with us, dwells in us. Dwells among us. And we said, well, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. But now, wait a minute, if. Christ is in you. God is in you. He's a part of you. Your kingdom come. So let me ask you this. What is in your kingdom that you're calling to come? What are you bringing into your earthly world? Bringing it out of your heaven, your, the thing that is consciously on your mind that God is saying, be conscious of your thoughts. And your visions, because if you write the vision down and make it plain, I will manifest it. Ask it for in my name. And a lot of us, we miss it. Pray without ceasing. Some of us are doing that anyway without realizing it. Constantly praying, constantly meditating on the negative. Or constantly meditating on the positive. Constantly asking God about the negative things in my life. Why is this always happening? Why is this coming to pass? You know, and that's funny. I, I, I say that. We, we wonder why things coming to pass because some things need to pass through you. You know, it, it comes and it passes. But we want to stay in the negative aspect and keep focusing on the next negative thing to come to pass. We don't ever look at the happiness. We never, when we pull that fishnet in, for some reason we have a tendency to only keep the unhealthy fish. The unhealthy thoughts. You know, it's interesting in two places. It says, then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and the and the sea was no more. That was revelation. But, you know, it's interesting. If you even go back to Isaiah, Isaiah says, for behold, I create a new heaven and a new earth and the former things shall not be remembered or come into mind. It's like when you reshift and you see this new heaven and you see this new earth and you realize that you have the power to change it. You have a, 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 the power to actually redo your own canvas. You can recreate your new heaven and your new earth with the visual aspect of knowing that Christ is saying, I'm here with you. I died. I, I, I came to bring a new kingdom. I was saying the kingdom of God is near. And now that he has died and sacrificed his soul, the kingdom is here. And you have the power to change and reshape your heaven and new earth. See, I wanted to highlight that it said it in Revelations at the end and in, in, in Isaiah, before even Christ came back, I'm creating something new. And really, it starts the new, new. The new, new starts in you. Repent from the way that you've been thinking. Repent meaning turning from your old ways, the old way that you've been thinking. Greater is he that is in you that is in the world. So your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in you. So you can make it even personal. My kingdom come. 
my will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord God, allow your will to be done on us, Lord God. Lord God, open up our understandings, Lord God, to understand that we can manifest our new heaven and new earth, Lord God, being guided by you, Lord God. Lord God, we just thank you. Lord God, open up us, Lord God, to repent from our ways, Lord God. Open up us, Lord God, to know what to throw back, Lord God, when we capture these thoughts, Lord God, allow us to only hold the goodness and the good news of you. Lord God, I just thank you for your grace and mercy in your holy name. We all say. Knowing that nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the world, the church, and all those in need. Let us pray. Today we pray for all who seek the kingdom of God. Lord, work your Holy Spirit within all and lead them to the light of your salvation. Guide us, your children, to proclaim the coming of your kingdom so that all might come to know you. Make us ready to speak a word of hope, the hope we have in Christ Jesus, so that we can encourage, support, and bring new believers to your glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, you have called us to be your treasures, to be those who love and serve you by helping to meet the needs of others. We bring before you this day persons and situations which need your healing love. Savior of the world, be present in all places of suffering, violence, and pain, and bring hope even in the darkest moments. Transform our hope into action that we may hope to build your kingdom right here on earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for all who are suffering hardship, those who are hungry, unemployed, persecuted, or ill. Give them the assurance that nothing can separate them from your love. We pray especially for those on our prayer list and those we lift to you in the silence and meditation of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayers. We know the Spirit of God intercedes for us in ways that our words cannot express. This is why we pray for those we know the best, love the most, and even those who don't know you. Yet it is into your hands that we offer all of these prayers through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our scripture today says that the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure. And Christ reminds us that our treasures, our gifts from God, are most beneficial when they are used to build up the kingdom of God. Through your tithes and offerings, you can share from your bounty to benefit the ministries of St. Mark Lutheran Church. If you have been blessed by this ministry, bless us in your donations and giving through your online banking, through cash app at dollar sign St. Mark Lutheran, through Venmo at St. Mark Lutheran dash church or by sending a check or money order to our mailing address, 4137 Washington Road, 
East Point, Georgia, 30344. May your gifts seed the kingdom of God. Since we are justified by God's grace through faith, let us confirm what we believe. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Remember, God is in you. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is. Go in peace and serve the Lord.